this century, our pioneering spirit got us through. The Buller Gorge, 1910. For the first two decades of this century, the main form of road transport was stagecoach. In 1909, for instance, there were only four motor cars on the west coast. One traveller wrote that the road through the Buller was a nightmare. It was narrow, winding and sheer, with zigzag roads cut into rock. But if the traveller had the nerve or stomach to take in the view, the scenery was breathtakingly beautiful. Some of our biggest feats were on the rugby field. It was the day Kirky scored his greatest try. It's been called one of the greatest solo tries ever made by an all-black. It was against the Lions, Lancaster Park, 1971. The corner flag was sort of not that far away, 50 metres away, which uh, might sound a long way, but it's not that far. I just put my ears back and, and went for it. Yeah. Still going. Fends one off on the right. On the left. Still going. And the crowd are just going wild. Tremendous try. The end Kirk Patrick from Poverty Bay. It was just one of 50 tries Ian Kirkpatrick scored for the All Blacks, but Lancaster Park was his greatest. Even off the rugby field, our men were great movers. In 1949, they didn't build bodies as big, but they could certainly move their muscles. The title of Mr New Zealand was awarded to Eddie Horton for best all-round physical condition and posture, and his Whangarei teammate Keith Going, winner of two special awards, gave a demonstration of muscle control. Eddie Horton did something along the same lines with his shoulder blades. However, the women's togs of the time left a little more to the imagination. The highly qualified judges give their verdict, and the winner is decked out with a sash and declared Miss Aotearoa for 1949. 